Hey guys, talking about hard effects and Foley today. A um, couple of different things I wanted to show you. Um, I'm using an example project that I've got here. Um, this time I'm leaving my hard effects and my Foley content sort of fully populated. Um, so I didn't remove any of it. Um, I've got it here and you can see sort of what that looks like. So I've got four hard effects tracks and then, um, several different ones for, for different passes of Foley content that I've gone through. Um, you know, you guys may not have as much Foley stuff happening since you're not going to, you know, there's really no expectation that you're able to record a whole bunch of stuff on your own. You might have some breathing or some like cloth rustling stuff if it's possible for you. Um, but you might wind up importing that stuff as well. Um, so the reason why I've, I've got four different hard effects tracks here. So this is for, you know, the stuff outside of like real character driven things. So I'm, I'm, I, I saved um, character driven things like footsteps and clothing rustling. And in my case, um, each character has a specific sort of eyeball thing happening with these little almost they're like camera shutters on their eyes. So each one had sort of a unique sound. So I, I did those as fully. Um, and then my hard effects tracks were for more direct things like the character interacting with something or like something falling down or like a match being lit there's some of those kind of things um, and I made four of those tracks just so for, for two reasons so I can take advantage of that checkerboarding thing so if things happen really close to one another um, like for example over in this area there's some things that happen real fast there's a scream and a squeak and a body fall and all these other things that, that sort of happen right at the same time if I had only two tracks here then they'd get layered on top of each other and and they would chop each other off to a certain point but I also don't want to have so many tracks that it gets super cluttered so I just have enough that I can checkerboard um, a sequence of sound effects if I need it but sometimes also you'll find when you're importing things that it just doesn't sound full enough so you need to layer the sounds with a couple of other similar sounds um, so having a couple of tracks for that is going to be useful so you would create your hard effects tracks in advance and when you start importing things I mean this is the method that I would go about it you look at your spotting notes you start collecting all of the sounds that you're gonna need um, that you're gonna import and then when you import them you're going to have I'll show you here if I went to import audio and I'm just gonna find a, a random thing from uh, from my downloads here um, so let's look so here's here's something what I want to do um, is instead of just importing onto a new track like it's going to ask me to, I want to add it to my clip list. And that's this guy over here. Um, so I'll add it to my clip list and boom, it doesn't take up another audio track. It winds up over here. I think it was Smith Music Mix. So there it is. Um, in which case then I would have my blank hard effects tracks and then I would just start throwing those things in where they were needed. So then I'm not creating a, a thousand different tracks for each single sound effect. I'm just adding them to the list. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, then the process is once you have all the content in your clip list, you're going to start populating things, right? You're going to start going through your timeline and adding things. And this is when, um, you know, synchronization is going to be key. Um, so what I want to do is maybe um, I just want to focus on the, the effects. So I'm going to select all my backgrounds and then shift option and mute all those so all I've got is listening to my sound effects tracks and my Foley stuff um, but then I wanted to show you a couple of uh, really unique things when you when you import stuff you absolutely have to let's, let's um, blow up one of these tracks here so there's my zipper flapping when you do this you should make a habit out of always in slip mode creating a little fade at the beginning and end all right that's just good practice to get into so then I'm gonna go over here to this side and put a fade because you know something sounds different than nothing and abruptly going from something to nothing um, you know you're gonna get lots of little clicks and pops especially if there's a ton of layers of stuff so get in the habit of cleaning up so I throw in the, um, the sound effect that I need close to where it needs to be and then I go through um, and clean it up, trim it as best I can. Um, I could uh, do some adjustments to clip gain, those kind of things that I need to. Um, and then what I want to show you is um, some other important stuff about synchronization. 
So let's take for example this. What's happening here is a zipper flapping. So let's listen to it. So it's like the zipper on this guy's chest. And you can kind of see, maybe I need to blow up the, the picture a little bit. So you can kind of see where this, this stuff happens. Now I'm looking at grid mode right now. So let's say here's one of the zipper flaps. So I'm going to chop this right here. So I'm going to break this, add my little fade. But here's where the meat of the sound happens, right? You can tell on the waveform, but that's not sitting on my grid, on one of the frames. So that's not going to help me because nothing happens between frames because we can't actually, you know, our, our eyes won't see that. So there's no way that a sound would occur and match up with visual action between frames. So I should get, I should zoom in here. And what I want to do is I want to put this moment right on the frame, right? But there's an easier way to do that than to sit here and look at it like that. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm in slip mode, put the cursor where the actual sound happens and then hit command comma and then watch down here at the very bottom where the cursor is, there's gonna be a little green arrow. So command comma and this little green arrow is called a sync point. So I used command comma to insert the sync point but then once it's there, I can use my cursor and I can move it around anywhere I want. What's cool about the sync point is that normally when I'm working in grid mode, the very beginning of the audio clip is what's going to snap to the grid. But when I'm in, uh, when I place a sync point and I go back to grid mode and I start to move my clip, it's going to snap right, like my sync point, right onto the grid. And now I can only move it one frame at a time. Right? And, and what's even nicer than this, as long as you have grid and nudge value turned on to one frame like this, when you have a, a, a clip selected, you can just press the comma to go backwards one frame, or one nudge value, or period to go forward one frame. So you can kind of like look at the action and see right here, it's, it's, you can see that zipper. I'm looking at the zipper on his chest. It's still sort of swaying and then the next one, boom, it hits. So that's where the action happens. All right, hopefully you guys are following me with that. So you're gonna import things into your clip list um, and they should be clearly identified so you can find them easily from your clip list. Then you get them close to where they need to be. You trim them up, put the fades, clean them up real good, adjust the clip gain if you need to. Then you put a sync point in there and sync it right up to the action. All right, so that's sort of your method for, for all these different things. If it's possible for you, I would recommend doing some Foley, you know, probably the only things that you're gonna be able to do um, with your, you know, internal laptop microphone or whatever, it's gonna be some cloth rustling. And for, I mean, as an example, for this guy, I mean, he's almost like a potato sack, right? So when he was running around, I basically had a, a hoodie sweatshirt and I just rustled it in front of the, a microphone. Um, and it's a silly sort of thing, but it would sound empty without that sound. So you kind of need to have those if, if possible. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this is probably going to be the most work intensive portion of this project that you're going to do. Um, so please understand that, um, you know, the idea is to get close um, to, you know, finished and accurate with all this, but um, fully realizing that that this is a lot of work it is so um, you know you can always add to this as we go on I'm not looking for super perfection yet that's for the very end of this project I'm looking for you to get the majority of the work done all right let's put it that way there's gonna be some moments like uh, in the next couple weeks we're gonna be doing dialogue and if your project is real slim on dialogue then you're just gonna have an opportunity to catch up on these hard effects and and keep working on that stuff all right, hopefully all this was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any issues or need anything else, and I'll see you next time.